Hello, welcome to my humble channel. My name is Rooks and I'm an artist. I was planting the main crop potatoes this week and it gave me an idea. For this episode, I'm going to depict my first potato that I've grown about a decade ago. Fichte. As per usual, I start with a very rough sketch. Not much of a point binding myself with precision at this point. I'm drawing a spud, not designing a skyscraper. Having said that, I'm going to stay somewhat true to its original shape, so I've given it a bulging rib cage. I've worked on it a little bit more, and given it some kind of hairline, but it somehow screams of a second born child as opposed to the first born, so I might change that. For the medium, I debated quite a while between watercolour and sharpie, just over half a minute, but I decided to go for the watercolour. This was a birthday present for my dear friend, and this was a present from my mother. They all believed in me. Oh, hi, Thelonious. He was our Arjuana prince. The hardest part of watercolour painting is removing old work from the new sheets. And I messed it up again because I'm a parsnip. For the watercolour, I don't bother making detailed sketches on the paper. I tend to leave a lot of things to chance. I mark the paper with a warm colour first, a bit like aperitif. Prepares me for the course of action to follow. Then I follow it with a mood tone, in this case, dead Laura Palmer grey. Roughly marking out the entire silhouette of the spud boy. A mouth is useful, but a problematic orifice, and I'm going to mark it with the colour of innards. At this point, I don't commit to any harsh contours. I'm gingerly implying shades. I normally let the paper dry naturally in between painting, as I'm a little scared of hair dryers. But I'm braving today. Now it's an eye time. The potato tubers don't really have eyes, but they do chit, and that can look a bit like eyes, so that's what I'm going for. As it is a potato, I did consider painting on some mud stains here and there, but I gathered that might be a little gauche. Now in some cases, it's absolutely fine to be a bit gauche, but not today. I've given it an ethnically ambiguous nose and skinny fat arms. It was looking a little cold, so I put sunshine yellow on its arms. As I add in details, I'm being extremely careful not to take away its spudness. Everybody loves shiny beady eyes with accentuated highlights, but we won't do that. Not for a potato that is weighed down by the sentiment. Now you may have heard that one must not use black meat. Well, I couldn't agree more. If someone gives you such gem of an advice, smile politely and do it anyway behind their back. My people tend to suffer from perfectionism, but luckily I have escaped that fate, as you can see. Nor had I ever been coerced into thinking that I needed to be perfect. I was always blessed with treacle-like affection, and that's what I've shown to this wonderful first-born potato of mine.
today. Thank you so much for staying this long. It'll be wonderful if you could subscribe. Or you can get your cat to do it. That'll be fun. <laughs> You've always been the best potato for me. Victor.